Salam alaikum. Anna Farhana Zev. Beshkun kun ma akum hanaya. And maybe not just in case, but in order. So, welcome everybody. Thanks for being here. I'm very happy. And I want to take you to an adventure. It's the right time. I know everybody wants for coffee. But now it's adventure time. Ready the car. Is anybody here who does not know what it is? That's great. Oh, one, two, okay. So I will let you know a little bit about it. It's a rally. Usually it started in Paris, 10,000 kilometers, and the finish is Dakar. So this is why it's called Rally Dakar. And it passed through Morocco for many, many years. Unfortunately, now it was moved to South America because I love Morocco a lot, but the desert in South America is also very nice. It's 10,000 kilometers, 14 days, and only 50% managed to reach to the end. So this is why Andrea mentioned it. I really made it. I was one of the 50%. And this was my motivation picture. I wanted to be part of this 50%. By the way, this is nearby Dakar, so it's in Africa. La Rosé. The hardest challenge and uh, kind of already coexistence with my family. I'm sure you all know about how hard it is dealing with the family, convince them about your big dreams they think you're totally crazy about. Can't you do something normal? So why do you want this? Oh man, what did we wrong that you come up with such crazy ideas? So I, from my point of view, they made everything right because they convinced me I can do everything I want. I just have to move my ass. So I convinced them. Finally, they supported me very much. Without them, it wouldn't have been possible. And I found a team. Without the team, it's again impossible. Like here, like the whole event, it's a lot of work for the whole team. And I say thank you at this point because you organized it very well. I love it. the timer on so I have an idea of how long I speak. We need mechanics, we need to prepare the bikes, we need to prepare our food and make my own bars because I love food. I had a shirt with race for food so uh, I go everywhere for something to eat. Um, I had a truck driver, I had a physio with me because you, after the second day at the latest it's painful everywhere, your whole body hurts and you ask yourself why? Why did I have this idea to think I could do this and survive? The bigger teams have more support um, to make it more uh, possible to finish at the end because you spend so much money and the money is the biggest key in the beginning to find sponsors to go there and to have the chance to survive. The mechanics and the riders and everybody has to have the same vision. We want to see our riders on the podium in the end after 14 days, 10 to 14 hours per day. 10,000 kilometers means, means 750 kilometers per day, off-road most of it. And um, so the rider wants to finish because, I mean, I can speak of me, I'm not very competitive, I just wanted to know, am I able to do it? And the mechanics, their goal is that the riders do not have to use tools during the day because they want to advertise afterwards. My Dakar riders are all finishers. They, their bikes last to the end without using tools. So we have different goals, but it's kind of the same vision. It's me on the podium that makes this dream come true. They have to work all night because I ride whole of the day. I come back, give my bike to the mechanic, and so it's kind of coexistence in this teamwork. I need to trust them. I can't change it. I don't have to watch them all night. I have to go food, talk to other people, uh, give interviews. It's also coexistence with the media because it's my job. My sponsors pay me for being like a, a 
about the German word Schlittfassäule. Who knows that? It's like advertising pole. Advertising pole. My whole body and bike is covered. They want me to show it so everywhere in each camera. So find a balance because every minute you're speaking to someone, which is very nice, you lose a minute sleeping and you need this to recover. So the mechanics need to be sure I want to work for a night. I don't stop because it's time, I stop when I finish. And so we all need to be committed on one goal. And you know it already from the act of women, please stand up. Now, I don't want you to fall asleep. <laughs> Coffee is coming later, everybody gets up. Because I'm so curious, who of you is not riding motorbikes, please sit down. So I have a little bit... Oh. Okay, usually people come to my uh, presentations because they love motorbikes, so it's great to see you, thank you. This is a little bit of a... My first, second day of riding. And you see all the spectators along the track, and this is how every day was like. And I was telling hi to my mom on Eurosports, and telling her how, how happy I was. So that was on TV worldwide, and it was fun because everybody was telling me after how much they enjoyed that I was greeting my mom. But for sure, that was a big support for me. A little, a small idea, part of our daily hell, fight with the environment. We have to coexist with this nature. We, okay, we choose it, we pay for it, a lot of money, and they made it as hard as possible. And in the end, you find out it's impossible to survive without each other. So everybody is going to help each other, even if your concurrence, if, if it's your teammate, it's easy, but if it's someone else who's trying to catch your cup, um, you usually don't want to support them. But when you see this, you also know, if I don't help someone today, then they will kick my ass tomorrow because, uh, and I wanted their help tomorrow. And so, oh, please, please, no, I saw you yesterday, go away. And find a solution yourself. So it's so important to be there. Don't spend all your energy on supporting each other, but don't just pass by saying sorry. And we see the big trucks, and you can imagine a bike is easy to push. So, yeah, sometimes it's a bit heavy, but in the end, you're able to do it. But a truck or a car, you need the help of someone big. You need another truck to support you because if it's stuck in the very soft sand, they call it on that day unknown quality of sand. Yeah, it was like flour. It was so, so soft. And you all know it from the desert here. I think it's called fesh fesh, and it's terrible. You just punch inside, it's, it's blowing a big, big um, thing and you can't see anything anymore. And then imagine a small bike in between and the trucks coming from behind from all sides. It's scary and you're totally exhausted. And on that day, that was 2009, my race was over. Unfortunately, uh, the hair is gone, uh, so not so, so nice pictures, but I have a lot of them. And I was out, so on the time, on the TV was told my mom, hi mom, I was already out in real race. And they didn't know where I was, and my, then I saw my bike on, on the truck. This is the sweeper who's cleaning the track afterwards. And so I was out, and my race was over, and I was so disappointed. But finally, I was there where I wanted to be, so I changed the job. And helped someone who was there without a mechanic. There are really people who go there and try it without support. So I gave my mechanic to another rider without support. I supported one rider, so we raised their chances to see the finish line. And it was hard work all night, waiting for them, and then start the work until it's ready, and send them back into race. When you're out on the track, 
challenge the nature and the environment. You can't change. You have to deal with this and find a way of coexistence with what you can't change. Uh, it, it, but it is easier when someone is there to support you. The spectators along the track were amazing. They were everywhere where you don't expect them. They spent there the whole day making picnic, being covered with dust and pushing and sometimes you really need a big team to support to, to get back on the track. There are some technical problems you can have, tires, wheels, and it is a real big problem. And because of this, the, the uh, top riders have the concept of supporting each other in a row. So you have in a team maybe three riders, one is the top rider, who might be on the podium. The second one is only there to support the first one. In this case, he gives his rear wheel and is waiting for the third rider to change the wheel with him and the third rider is waiting for the truck to give the spare parts. So the first rider is able to continue very fast. So the second rider also fast because they have to be kind of fast, the same fast and they support. They push each other, they tow each other, whether they are they in the team or not, to raise the chances to be successful. This is my teammate David Casteux. On this race, he changed every day the engine. The spare part, the gearbox, uh, wasn't that good quality as expected in the training or just, uh, checked in the training. On the race, they supported him with something else. And after the race, he was really a professional engine changer because every day he had to wait for the truck. There's no other rider to give him his engine. He waited for the truck. He had so many hours penalty. And these trucks, most of them, besides the Kamas, for example, you know them, um, they are in the race only for racing. All other trucks, like 80%, are in the race to support other riders. On the time section, you're allowed to support each other, but only as riders. Okay, they all close their eyes when the spectators help, but when you're a service team, you're not allowed to help inside the race. He was lucky. Something happened, but he made it to the camp. So he had a good friend who helped him to survive this day. Also, this one, they just fix it overnight. And he has the chance to stay in the race. They, maybe their friends passed by, or they didn't get any help, but they had to sleep outside. They had to wait until next day or the day after to find someone who is able to bring this big truck out of the dunes. So it's a question of organizing before when you need it in an urgent in case of emergency. This is my tire. I really like to fulfill the wishes of my sponsors, cheer it into every camera, but then I'm ooh, in a hurry. And we use not tubes, we use moose. It's kind of a foam. And when you ride in the off-road, it doesn't matter how fast you go, but when you're on the road, it just it kind of melts inside. And so I was, photo, 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 oh please, one more picture. No, yeah, really, now I have to go, okay, one more, and then, ah, oh, gas to the start. And I was like, ah, oh, it's shaking it, yeah, what is it? And then found out, okay, I stopped, check, ooh, my tire, ooh, it's empty inside. So I really had to find a solution before entering the special stage. <laughs> Tried to call my service team, no answer, they, they didn't, were in a place where they had connection. <coughs> so I thought, okay, what can I do? I, I need to have some help from my the other service teams in this case. So I stopped the first truck. Oh, please, I have a problem. I have plenty of tires in my service truck. Can you please give me one of yours? What brand are you riding? Yeah, Pirelli. No, sorry, we ride another one. Bye bye. Good luck. I was like, no way, oh shit, my race is over just because of a tire and me giving photos. Oh. And then the second truck. Stop, please, I need help. And these were like my orange angels. And in Germany we have yellow angels, but these were orange. 
They stopped. No problem. Go away, baby. We help you. And then they fixed my tire, and I was like, you know, me. I just gave some kisses and then go on. <laughs> so that was really my good luck on this moment. I could continue my race and then enjoy the scenery. This is where I was there for, find a good way, survive the days until I was stopped because I was so thirsty. We had so hot days. It was the hot hell of Yambala, 48 degrees. And I was really looking for, oh, my road book told me dunes. When I was, oh, without water, that could be a problem. So I stopped when I saw these guys, they have a water bottle here. So I was like, okay, that could be nice. Oh, having a chat, I could need your water, can you help me, take some pictures. Because I, I had got the advice before, take it as a holiday, otherwise you have no chance to finish. Stop when you need to pee, stop when you need to want to make a picture, so you're more relaxed on the ride. Okay, good advice, thanks for sharing. So I stopped there, took a picture, had a chat, took some water, and then wanted to continue. My bike didn't start. Oh. But this time, when I was out the first time, there was no electricity anymore. This time the electricity was fully there, full power, it started try to, but nothing happened. Oh, try to call my mechanic for advice. No connection, what else? And before I said, satellite phone up, this is for pussies, I don't need that. And now, oh, damn, why do I have such a big mouth? Okay, so then this guy offered me do you want me to bring you to the biwak? Ah, we arrived in the morning, we started at 4 o'clock, 300 kilometers to the start, and then he offered me to bring me to the finish, how could that work? But that day was like a loop, and so he put me on the second ride, <laughs> and I reached the finish line, which was like 2 kilometers far away, talked to them, Am I able to connect to contact my mechanic? Do you want me to get help there? Is it possible? You know, until you be in the finish until tomorrow morning, no problem. Okay. I found my mechanic, went back with him, wanted to show him that it's not working, and then pre press the button, it started. Oh my god, miracle. No, it was vaporization. It was so hot that the fuel was not able to start to spark and so now it was two hours in the wind, everything cooled down, I said, okay, bye bye, I had to continue. So now they call it Tina Meyer style when they someone else copy that and come to get help in this way. The days are very long and long and long. So you need to find the strategy to deal with this. You're tired, everything hurts and um, Sometimes I imagine inside, listen to music to get my heart muscles relax. Uh, and it's important to find your carrot, what is towing you over the day. And at the end of this day, it was like the view on the next day is the rest day, so one day off. And most of the guys had a hotel room and asked me, oh, which hotel do you stay? And uh, I sleep at the tent. We are, uh, if you want to take a shower, you're welcome to join me in my room. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> but the only one I would wish for, he could he ask me and invite me, he didn't ask. So, but anyhow, the whole day I was thinking of Ruben, this is his name, but don't tell him. Uh, it's a secret, of course. Wet hair, only a blanket on his hips, coming out of the bathroom. And I was like, you know what, come on. <laughs> In the end, my bathroom looked like this, it was already night, and I just fell into my tent. But it doesn't matter, it was my carrot towing me over the whole day, and made me finish this day. So it's kind of a secret coexistence, they don't know about it, but it helped me a lot. The spectators on, along the track is amazing. It's, we are there for them and they are there for us. It's like here, I'm here to entertain you and give some inspiration, maybe talk you into adventure. 
And this is what the spectators are as well for us. They are everywhere, every hour, no matter what the weather is, how hot or cold or dusty it is, they climb on the mountains and they sit there and have a nice day and enjoy us going there. Could banish, okay, I had to stop here. Um, give Mary Lynn a photo and see, she sent it to me afterwards on Facebook. The other one I really loved was Stop Kiss, but I was so in a hurry. But I imagine how surprised they would have looked when I took off my helmet and said, hello, it's me. <laughs> As a girl, I think they expected more men to be there. It's great to get food when you're totally worn out there, have coke or cold drinks, get the babies, and I had the strategy when I was really, oh, I can't, I'm completely destroyed, I just stopped this. And I'm, okay, here's nobody. Okay, I, I'm able to finish to the next spectators. I stop there, get something to drink, have a cookie or whatever. And then they are so happy, someone stopped. Yeah, finally. They, then I said, okay, I can't tell them, now I want to stop because that would disappoint them so much. So, okay, I use them as a step stone, little motivation from outside until the next spectators. And so I was able, with this little like help of them, to finish my race. And this is the same for everybody. With each other, when you need support, we find a kind of support. You just have to see the chances of support. These are two guys, you see it on the little numbers. They are top riders, top 10 riders. And still, they love each other in a way like we are the rally family. We love what we do. And sometimes we fight it with each other in the evening we chat under the shower. And we celebrate with the whole team to get this energy and share it and have the most maximum. You told us before, go, uh, if you want to go alone, go fast. Uh, alone you go fast, but with the team you go further. And this is the same here. It's great to be there. On the third attempt, I really made it to the finish line. I was so like, oh, overwhelmed, totally worn out, dirty as you can see, and so happy. I did it. I was so proud of myself, and it's just the happiness of being there and have this whole adventure done. And this is what I want to invite you. Go dream big and jump into an adventure. Thank you. Shukran